Hello and welcome to the Golden Octagon MMA channel. I am Matt Anderson and in today's video we are going to be going over my bets and my picks for this weekend's UFC card, Fight Night, Max Holloway versus Calvin Cater. I always wait to make my fight bet picks until after the weigh-ins and after the stare-downs because you never know what each fighter may give away in that exact moment. For example, a person may look super dry on the scale, they may not even make weight. Or example, a person may look super well on, on the scale, they might give a huge flex, show that they had made weight, no problems at all. And then at the stare-downs, a lot of times this is the first time that you have seen these two guys face-to-face. -face. So that is a huge giveaway. A person may be way bigger, a person may just, just give something to you that you didn't know before. So that is why I always wait until after the weigh-ins and after the stare-downs to make my picks. Before we get started, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up to show your support to the channel. And if you want to see more videos just like this every single fight day and two times a week, me and my longtime friend Dorian do a podcast here on this channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check us out. You will not be disappointed. We have a lot of content coming right at you, but let's jump into this card. A first fight of the night, Jacob Kilburn versus Austin Lingo. Both looked good on the scale. Both made weight, no problem. Um, at the stare down, they shook hands, super respectful. Um, Jacob Kilburn is the underdog, plus 185. Austin Lingo is a minus 225 favorite, as he should be. This dude um, trains at Fortis MMA with all the top dogs. The over under on this is um, two and a half at a minus 115 each. So not really anything there. If anything, you should either stay away or maybe put Austin um, Lingo in a parlay. Aside from that, not too much to say. We're going to move on to the next one. Up next, we've got Sarah Morris versus Vanessa Mello. This is one I do believe there is money to be made on. When it comes to women's MMA, it is super hard sometimes to, to tell anything about the fight, but there was something in this fight that I was able to focus in on, and that is why I do think there is money to be made here. So we've got Vanessa Mello made 136, Sarah Morris made 136, but Sarah Morris's face completely covered. When Vanessa Mello weighed in, she looked good, she looked happy. Um, at the stare down, nothing too crazy. They gave a fist bump. Sarah Morris's record, 6-6. Six and six. Like Vanessa Mello's record is 10 and 8, so neither one of them are by any means an elite 135 pound contender. We're not going to see any of them fighting for the championship anytime soon, but there is one key factor that I zoomed in on. Sarah Morris is a minus 200 favorite, and Vanessa Mello is a plus 160 underdog. And Vanessa Mello is on a three fight losing streak at this point, so I do believe she's gonna have some fire behind her to break this three fight losing streak so she doesn't get cut from the UFC. So I'm really going to be focusing in on, and I'm really gonna be looking at putting money in a parlay uh, some point with like Vanessa Mello winning that fight at a plus 160 underdog. Moving along, we've got David Zawada versus Ramzan uh, Imaev. This is one that I also believe that there is money to be made on. David Zawada weighed in 170, looked good, flexed, you know, the normal. Ramzan um, Imaev just looked nervous. He wasn't sure if he made weight. He had a unsure look on his face. But the thing about these Dagestans are, they are good no matter what. They always look like they have trouble making weight, but they always perform so well. But the thing is, Ramzan Imaev has already lost four fights. The guy is 19 and four. David Zawada, 17 and five. They had a respectful handshake. David Zawada is a plus 210 underdog against a minus 270 favorite, Ramzan in my eve had to make sure I said that right. So I believe that if you can parlay and get maybe two, three legs on that parlay with David Zawada, there is money to be made just because Ramzan MF just he looked like he wasn't all the way there on the scale, and that is why I always wait until after the weigh-ins and after the stare downs to make my fight picks. So up next we have Carlos Felipe versus Justin Taffa. We've got the big boys. Both on barely made weight. 264 for Carlos Felipe. Justin Tafo tipped the scales. 265, the max you can be. 
you know, good stare down. Neither looked scared. They both stared right into each other's um, faces, handshake at the end, nothing too big. My only fear is this right here. Carlos Felipe, nine and one. Justin Tafa, four and one. The experience just is not there for Justin Tafa. And two fights ago, I remember him getting starched completely by Jorgen De Castro. This dude destroyed him the first punch. Carlos Felipe, on the other hand, just beat Jorgen De Castro not too long ago. Carlos Felipe is the favorite, as he should be. Justin Tafa, uh, plus 160 underdog. But I do believe if you can get a parlay in the, of this fight going under one and a half rounds, it is a plus 155 that it goes um, uh, under one and a half, minus 185 over this. So I believe if you can get that um, under one and a half in a parlay, I believe you're in the money there. Moving right along, we've got a female bantamweight fight on our hands. Wu Ya Nan versus Jocelyn Edwards. Wu Ya Nan moving up from 125 to fight um, Jocelyn Edwards. Been at um, 135 the whole time. Um, at the weigh-in, Jocelyn Edwards, she honestly just looked like it was her first time there. I don't know if this is her first UFC fight. I can't say I have seen her fight before, but I'm just looking at what I've seen. At her record, she looks like she's 9-2. and two. She looks like she knows what she's doing, but maybe starstruck at the UFC for the first time or honestly just had trouble making weight. So, which brings me to Wu Yanan. Looked amazing on the scale. Gave a flex. Looked super happy to be there. Like I said in the beginning, moving up from 125. Um, her record is 11-3. and three. This is a dead-even fight at... The point of me filming this, both minus 115. Um, the over under on this fight is two and a half, though, and that little key factor of Jocelyn Edwards just looking like she had not been there before just kind of gave me just a little bit of a tell that Wu Yanan may finish this fight, and as long as it goes under two and a half, you're in the money. So if you can get a parlay in on that, I believe this is a good bet that you can make here. Up next, the final card on the prelims. We've got Phil Halls versus Nasser Dean Imaev. 186 for Phil Halls. Big flex. You know, showed everyone that he was in shape. Nasser Dean Imaev, on the other hand, didn't look so good. He just... He just didn't look like he was ready to be there for, for some reason. Um, he looked drained. He, I don't know how else to say besides, eh. He just didn't look like he wanted to be there at all. At the stare down, super respectful. It was a good stare down. They uh, shook hands at the end. Uh, both fighters, 9-2. and two. We're going to get to the odds now. Minus 120 for Phil Halls. Minus 110 for um, Imaev. So either way, the odds makers don't really know where this one's going. Um, the over-under on this is one and a half. So midway through the fight, I don't know, guys. I'm probably going to say I'm going to stay away from this one for the most part. If you were to get this one in, maybe a parlay under one and a half. Either way, not much money to be made here. So we're going to move right along. All right, kicking off the main card, we've got Punahele Soriano versus Dushko Todorovic. This fight is a great fight to start off the main card. Punahele uh, Soriano weighed in, huge back flex. If I can remember, I will put the picture um, up right now. This dude's back is massive, huge back flex, showed that he was in shape. Dude, um, <laughs> Dushko Todorovic, uh, 186, also happy to be there. Give a flex, nothing uh, too crazy there at the stare down. They uh, stare down, nothing too wild. Give a handshake, nothing much. Both records, both undefeated. This is why this is a great fight to start off the main card. Two undefeated fighters want to show what they are made of in the UFC. Somebody's O has got to go. So when it comes to the odds, Punahele Soriano is a plus 130 underdog. Dushko Todorovic is a minus 160 favorite. I do believe there is be there is money to be made here. If you can get um, Soriano in on a parlay, he is a plus 130 underdog. So not too much to be made there. But like I said, if you can get him in 
on a parlay. I do believe there is money to be made there. Up next, we've got Joaquin Buckley versus Alessio DiCarico. This fight is going to be good. I do believe that the UFC is feeding Alexio DeCarico to Joaquin Buckley. They are nurturing him at this point. After his Impa Kasanga Nai knockout, I do believe that his past two opponents have been head fed to him. The UFC is really trying to grow Joaquin Buckley as a star, so I do believe that Joaquin Buckley will be winning this fight. Anyway, both weighed in, 185, both made weight. Um, <laughs> it was kind of funny, uh, at the stare down, Joaquin Buckley got right in his grill, showed him that he was not scared of him, but Alexio DiCarico showed nothing. The dude was stone cold, did not give him anything. The bets for this fight, minus 275 Joaquin Buckley as the favorite, as he should be, plus 215 the underdog, uh, over under is two and a half minus 105 and minus 125 no money to be made there my recommendation is to stay away from this fight but enjoy what happens this is going to be a good one up next we've got santiago ponzinibbio versus lee jingliang this is going to be a good one guys trust me when i tell you this santiago ponzinibbio coming off of a two-year layoff his first fight back made weight the last one to make weight looked amazing Big flex at the end, looked super happy to be there. Li Jingliang, on the other hand, also looked good. These Chinese fighters are coming into the UFC in a wave. They are trying their best to come in as a wave, just like the Dagestans, and take over. And I believe it is possible here. This is the fight of the night that I am focusing on. Li Jingliang, as an underdog, a plus 245 underdog. I cannot believe it. Santiago Ponzinibbio coming off of a two-year loss is a minus 305 favorite. I understand where the odds makers are getting this from. Li Jin Liang coming in a wild striker. Santiago Ponzinibbio being a vet of the game, knowing how to fight all styles. I believe that they are keen in on the fact that he knows what he's doing when it comes down to it. But me personally, two years away, the ring rust may get him against a young up and coming fighter at Li Jin Liang. That's why I'm taking Li Jin Liang um, as the underdog. And to make my point even greater, at the stare down, Li Jin Liang was clearly the bigger man, had an inch, two inches, and just mass on him, which which further emphasizes why I am taking Li Jin Liang in this fight. This is my straight bet of the night. Li Jin Liang, a plus 245 underdog. As I said before, this is where money can be made. On to the co-main event. Matt Brown versus Carlos Condit. This fight is a fight... I want to say 10 years in the making. This fight has yet to happen, even though it's been scheduled multiple times. But Matt Brown, 24-17 uh, and 17 record. Carlos Condit, 31-13 and 13 record. These are two vets of the game. Matt Brown came into the weigh-in, looked at the scale like he was mad at it, as Matt Brown does. Made weight, 171. Carlos Condit made weight. One, uh, 171 as well in the stare down. Great stare down. It's finally happening. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This is going to be a great fight, guys. Um, Matt Brown, the uh, slight underdog, plus 140. Con Carlos Condit, the favorite, minus 170. My pick for the night on this fight is Carlos Condit. And if you do um, uh, want to uh, bet this, make sure you get it in a parlay because there is not too much money to be made as a straight bet here and we are going to move on to the final fight of the night the main event calvin cater max holloway we're going down both made weight no issues calvin cater looked determined he looked like he was there to prove a point to show the world that he is there to be the next in line to fight for that championship uh there's only one problem in the way Max Holloway has been the champion for a while, regarded as one of the GOATs of the featherweight division. He is not going to go away easy. Um, at the stare down, they both looked right into each other's eyes, showed no fear on either one. Moving along to the bets, Max, the minus 165 favorite, Calvin Cater, plus 135 underdog. This is a tough one for me. This is a good fight. I don't know which way to go, 
But something tells me that when it comes to the experience, Calvin Cater just hasn't beat that top echelon of the featherweight division, and Max has already been at the top. So the question is, is Max done? I don't think so. I'm taking Max Holloway in this fight. Um, if you bet, make sure you get this on a, on a parlay. It is going to be tough to make money on this as a straight bet. That is my pick for the night in the main event. Max Holloway taking it home. Honestly, probably by a decision. So I'm going to give one last rundown of all my picks for the day. And then I'll get out of here. All right, so up first, I'm taking like Vanessa Mello, David Zawada, Punahile Soriano, and Carlos Conde in a four-leg parlay, equal, um, equaling all the way up to a plus 28.91. That is money to be made there. I do believe that each one of those had definitely had the chance to win their fight. So that is my first bet of the day. And my next bet... Austin Lingo, Vanessa Mello, David Zawada, uh, Justin Taffa versus Carlos Felipe going under one and a half, and Jocelyn Edwards versus um, Yao Nan Wu also going under two and a half rounds. And with all five in the parlay is a plus 8,831 money to be made if you can get a five leg parlay if you trust yourself doing it. And my last bet, my my straight bet, betting the underdog, Li Jin Liang against the returning uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio, been out two years. I don't know what Santiago Ponzinibbio is going to look like. Li Jin Liang is young and hungry. He is crazy. I believe he gets it done here, and you may find yourself cashing out. He is a plus 245 underdog. I may get a little wild and um, have... Li Jin Liang on a parlay with one other bet. Maybe tomorrow. I'll figure it out later on. But that is all that I have for this time, guys. Remember, if you enjoyed this, please leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the channel. Plenty of content coming at you. But that's all for this time. Stay golden.